If you're just getting into cars and trucks, you've probably seen all these busted out Dodges with 300,000 miles on them going for like 15 grand and wondering what in the hell is going on. Well, it's all because of that little Cummins logo on the side. And before we go into the pickup trucks, let's talk about where it all started in the very beginning. Cummins has been around for like 90 years. It's crazy to say. It's actually 94 now. And it all started back in 1930 when... Classy Cummins, the founder of Cummins, he stuffed one of his engines, a diesel Cummins engine, in a 1930 Packard sedan and drove it 800 miles to the New York Auto Show using just 30 gallons of fuel. That's averaging 26 miles per gallon. Honestly, for any diesel nowadays, that's good, but back then that was like insane. And of course, Klessy was a baller and he uh, didn't actually register for the New York Auto Show, so they turned him away. And what do you do when you get turned away from the New York Auto Show? Well, you just go to the next closest one. So he goes down to Atlantic City's Auto Show and also wasn't registered for that but he decided to rent a space across the street and set up shop and stole the show. So there was already some chatter about the Cummins diesel. And then he did something that nobody would have ever thought was possible at the time. He did a cannonball run before the cannonball run existed. Five years after that auto show in an Auburn 851 sedan with a 1935 Cummins in it, he goes, on a trip from New York to LA. He somehow hit 90 miles an hour in this thing before there was interstates. It sounds terrifying. <laughs> and he averaged 40 miles to the gallon. 40 miles to the gallon. Just to give you some perspective here, in 2000 when the Prius come out, this is 65 years later, they got 45 miles to the gallon in a hybrid electric car. So, well, I don't know what the hell they did to that car back in 1935, but that engine was running like a top. Diesel was a third of the price at the time because it was considered a byproduct of making petroleum. So if you do some redneck math like I do, which is probably not accurate, 40 times three, you're basically getting 120 miles a gallon compared to the price of gas. But they never went into the automotive world to start. They started with Kenworth in 1931. Kenworth was the first to adopt the Cummins engine, the H series, in 1931, like I said, and they still run Cummins engines to this day. You can, there's other options, of course, but Cummins is still an option to this day. And then shortly after that, World War II kicked off, and every single manufacturer in America was hopping on board to produce many items for the war, and Cummins was included. If you don't know, getting a military contract is a huge deal because you get unlimited demand because things are constantly breaking and constantly expanding as the war continues. So Cummins supplied engines for generators to keep radio towers going and engines for trucks to get soldiers in and out of battle. This was all the H series once again. Now the H series was nothing impressive. It only made 125 horsepower, but it was known because it would run forever. Cummins was actually the first to ever offer a 100,000 mile engine warranty. And now we're advancing into the 50s where Clussy Cummins would retire. Even after he retired, he uh, invented Jake brakes, which is crazy. When you're Clussy Cummins, you do what you want, I guess. Now let's jump ahead again to the 1960s. Cummins was in 100 countries and had half of the heavy truck market. So imagine this, every single semi you see on the road, you could flip a coin, whether it had a Cummins engine or just some random other diesel engine. That is just wild. And they weren't just producing tractor trailer engines. They were producing tractor engines, generators, all kinds of different stuff. Like it wasn't just that. So they were doing well in the 1960s. Let's skip to the good part. In 1981, where Cummins wanted to expand into the light duty truck market. So after shopping around for a few years in 1984, Cummins would make a deal with Chrysler and they would work to make the Cummins engine work in a Chrysler Dodge pickup. So in 1989, the first gen Cummins releases with the 6BT Cummins engine, the 12 valve Cummins that is legendary today. They were the only ones offering a turbo diesel at the time too. It only made 160 horsepower, but it made 400 foot-pounds of torque and uh, that was tuned down because Dodge wasn't comfortable running 500 foot-pounds of torque through their drivetrains. Now let's talk about the engine itself and the reason you're seeing those old trucks with a lot of miles still going for 
crazy prices. That's because the 12 valve Cummins was known for being bulletproof and being super simple and easy to work on. Allegedly, you can put a tune on these things with just a screwdriver. There's no computer, they're dead simple. And once you own one, parts are easy to find. They came in generators, school buses, heavy equipment, tractors, they came in everything. It was just converted to work in trucks. These were not designed for trucks initially. They were designed for generators and other stuff like that. Generators is where it gets important. And the reason is, is because Cummins generators are used for backup power for very, very important industries like hospitals. They cannot shut down. They have to be able to run at all times. They need to be able to sit there at the same RPM all day and make power. Now, as long as you're not beating on them too hard and you leave them stock, these things will last to 400,000 miles. And there's been a few that have made it to a million. Now, they ran that same motor from 1989 to 98, where they switched to the 24 valve 6PT. Same concept, just a different head and a different injection system. Now, that head did make quite a big difference. It was now making 235 horsepower and 460 foot-pounds of torque. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated in the uh, shopping part of things. In 1998 when they switched to the 24 valve, other things started to go wrong as they introduced more complicated features. For example, the injection pumps were known for being very bad, especially if your lift pump started to get old, it would ruin your injection pump and they're like $1,200. But I drive one of these things. I have a 1998 24 valve, five speed dually four x four. Check it out on the other channel. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I like it anyway. But I haven't had many issues with the injection system, knock on wood. But uh, there is just a weird, few weird electronic issues. Like I had to change the accelerator pedal position sensor and but otherwise it's been a very reliable truck another issue with the 24 valves is some of the blocks were made out of country and they're labeled uh they're stamped with a 53 the castings were not good and there's a cavity in part of it that will just blow out eventually and it's kind of just a time bomb you don't really know when it's going to happen so if you're looking for trucks look out for the 53. And this is also where the transmission issues started. Uh, the 47RE was introduced in the second gen Cummins and that higher horsepower and torque was just a little bit too much for them, I think. And that's where we started to see premature transmission failure. Even the manual had issues. The uh, five speed, which is the one I have, is the, uh, the fifth gear nut will just back out for some reason. Who knows why that it's very odd but it will ruin your transmission now if you're building for power all these things can be avoided the fifth gear is easy to fix and uh, you can fix it yourself and for the automatics there are so many diesel transmission shops like randy's transmissions that just they build these crazy built 47 48 re's a lot of the uh, one ton pickups with the five speed they came with 410 gears which that sounds perfect for towing, but you don't have the red line you have in a gas truck. <laughs> so when the speed limits change from 55 to whatever the state wanted, they got uh, pretty hard to drive. I'm like redlining to hit 75 in my pickup. So they made that same motor and everything until 2003 where they switched to the common rail injection system. Now outside of the 12 valve Cummins, this is the Cummins swap. This is the one everybody wants. And that's because that Bosch CP3 injection pump is just built. That thing can, that thing can send her. They still use a version of that injection pump today. And this is all before emissions on diesel engines were really, really restricted. So this thing was making 325 horsepower and 600 foot-pounds of torque. Now these motors became legendary because these things were known for making ridiculous horsepower. You could turn them up to 700 horsepower on a stock bottom end and be fine. I mean, you need some other modifications, but they'll just take it. And that's when you usually see these crazy diesel drag trucks. They're usually a 
24 valve 59 common rail including one that made 2500 horsepower in 2007 due to emissions issues they changed from the 59 to the 67 with the first major engine change in dodge's relationship with cummins even with an 800 cc oversize the thing only made 25 horsepower more than the common rail did at 350 horsepower and only 50 foot pounds more of torque sitting at 650 which is <laughs> Which is plenty. Cummins has basically kept that 6.7 the same with minor changes, and it now makes 400 horsepower and a thousand foot pounds of torque. And along with the 6.7, they actually switched over to a newer style of turbo called VGT turbos. They uh, basically change the compression chamber size somehow, and it reduces turbo lag like a lot. My dad has one of these trucks, and the first time I drove it, I was like, holy shit, in a stock truck, this thing hauls ass. Two years into the 6.7 change, they actually switched body styles. So if you're looking at different body styles, they only made the uh, 6.7 in the third gen pickup for two years, and then they went in 2009 and changed it to a newer body style. And that's when Dodge separated into Rams, so now they're just Ram trucks, so if you're looking for parts you in 2010 you got to put in ram instead of dodge ram 2500 <clears throat> then the fourth gen ran all the way until 2018 and they changed the body styles again basically just a different grill there's a few other little changes but they're almost the same so if you're just curious of the history of cummins or you're looking to buy and you're not sure which one to go for there you are if i miss anything let me know in the comments below i uh Sure, I have. Cummins has a long history, especially in just the Dodge trucks. Like, there's so many different minor changes, and they change body styles a thousand times. And, and I'll put a pinned comment with everything I missed. So if you made it to here, and you're like, this guy's fucking eight, just check in the comments. I'm sure I put something. I'm sure I corrected myself. <laughs> if I was going to recommend any purchase of any Cummins truck, I'd probably say any of the first gen with the original 6BT 12 valve. They made them into the second gen too. I like the look of the second gen trucks a little bit more. And then uh, into the third gen, third generation of the pickups when the common rail came out. If you're willing to spend a little bit more, those are a lot more expensive. Those are really, really good trucks. But yeah, that's it. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. And uh, make sure you like and subscribe and let me know what videos you want me to cover in the future. Thanks for watching. Peace.